Welcome to the Beauty Inspires Beauty Podcast, where I've made it my mission to help beauty professionals, creative and independent entrepreneurs like you find the tools, inspiration, and motivation to unlock the abundant life you know you are meant to be living. Each week, you can expect epic guests and solo episodes sharing every tool, trick, and skill set I've learned on my own 20-year journey to grow and scale your life and business. I'm your host, Jessica Bergio, former salon owner turned beauty business mentor and crazy multi-passionate entrepreneur, here to share incredible stories and insight about how others got started and the unconventional path they took to get there. My goal is to inspire you to reach your business and life goals with confidence to achieve your dream life through creating non-negotiables and boundaries without sacrificing your personal well-being and relationships. I know firsthand how real burnout can be. So if you're ready to stop the overwhelm and get clear and focused, you're in the right place, babe. Let's jump right in. Welcome back to the Beauty Inspires BD podcast. I am your host, Jessica Bergio. And today we are going to have a conversation around indecisiveness. I know it's kind of a big word, right? (laughs) Indecisiveness. What does that even mean? Well, I think we all know what indecisiveness means. We've all been in situations where we're like, should we? Shouldn't we? Should I? Shouldn't I? This or that? Maybe? Maybe yes, maybe no. And what does living in that indecision feel like? It feels for me, it feels icky. It feels a little chaotic inside my head. It feels like the world is spinning out of control and I need to make a decision right now. Now it could be the smallest thing. How many fights have you gotten into with your boyfriend or your husband around? Where do you want to eat? I don't know. Where do you want to eat? I don't know. Can you just fucking pick somewhere? Like that's being indecisive on a much smaller scale. Right. But look what that can do. It can cause arguments. It can cause fights over like the dumbest thing. Do you want a burger or do you want a steak? Do you want to eat in or do you want to stay out or stay, stay in or go out? Those things will make or break how you're showing up on a day-to-day basis, right? So what does that mean? So you guys hear me talk about non-negotiables all the time. So non-negotiables are are our pre-decided decisions that we've made when we're in a emotionally sound place. When we make decisions, when we're not in an emotionally sound place, sometimes it can look like scarcity. It can look like saying yes to things you were supposed to say no to. It could look like boundaries being just railroaded over because you want to people please. Um, All of the things can come up. And when we are super decisive on our non-negotiables, on the way that we want to be out in the world, how we want to be showing up in our life and our business, what it really means for you to take care of yourself or feel good, those things need to be set in stone in place so that when things come up in your life, you won't be as indecisive. You won't be like, should I, shouldn't I? Is this a good idea? Or is this just another, what I think opportunity or or another distraction disguised as an opportunity? See, that was something I struggled with for many, many years is I kind of have shiny object, object syndrome shiny object syndrome. Also have a little bit of a squirrel brain. I'm super creative. I love to fly by the seat of my pants. As much as I love structure, I also like no structure. So if you're resonating with that at all, if you get what I'm saying, we can live in that place of indecisiveness quite a bit. And your brain starts to not be as comfortable with the decisiveness. And while that sounds kind of crazy, it's so true. And in my, in my experience, when I'm rooted in why I'm doing something, I don't have to wonder. Motivation doesn't even come into play at that point. Motivation for me only comes in forms of if I happen to see something that uplifts or motivates me. When I think about going to the gym and I have a cousin who can barely walk, I think about her. When I think about how fortunate I am to still be here for people that I've, I've lost over the years. You know, when I'm on my hard runs, when I'm in the middle of doing something that's tough, that makes me want to feel like I have to quit. I think about things like that. And that to me motivates me to keep going because other people don't have the option or the opportunity. What I'm talking about today is literally making decisions that are in your best, highest version of your self-interest in order to get you crushing your goals that you say you want. We all have goals. We all have dreams. We all have aspirations on what level. That's what, you know, I know what level I'm trying to play at. And so in order for me to show up in that, in, in, in that way, 
I have to be so clear. I have to be so decisive of what I'm going to allow take up my energy and my space that I am fiercely protective of that. And there's no indecisiveness going on in my head. When this, we can break this down to relationships. I know exactly how I would like to be treated and how I would like not to be treated. So when I'm starting, when, when things, let's just say, for instance, if someone starts treating you in a way, but you know, that's not going to work for you, you have two choices. You speak up and say something, this isn't going to work for me. And then you get to have a, a thoughtful conversation around, is this something that person can do for you or not? And in that moment, it's not a decision, it's a discussion. And having discussions, having open-ended conversations where you know your position on something because it's in your best interest or for your highest version of yourself, that's boundaries, that's decisiveness, that's living in a place that you're rooted in what is most important to you. So if you struggle with um, indecision a lot, if you're constantly in that, should I, shouldn't I, is he right for me? Is he not right for me? Um, is this job going to be better for me or should it just stay small where I'm at? Is this an opportunity or is this something else dis disguise, a distraction disguise as an opportunity? When you can peel back and come from a place of knowingness, like what is in my best interest? What is it that's going to serve me for the goals and visions that I have? And sometimes what serves you is it feels like you should say yes to something now. Oh, that sounds fun. Oh, I want to meet my girlfriends for happy hour, but I committed that I'm going to get up early and go to the gym every day this week because I have a big event coming and I want to look and feel my best. So this week, it's going to be a no for any of the out eating, eating out, drinking, staying up late, all of those things. That's a small scale of, you know, a goal that you have. Those are the commitments that you need to make. Those are maybe if you want to call them sacrifices that you need to, to put in place for the longer version, for the long game, for how you want to be living your life. If we make decisions based on what feels good right now, we'll say yes to everything. How many times have you committed to going to drinks with somebody at 9 a.m. and then by 7.30 when you're supposed to be getting ready, you're like, I don't want to do this. Why did I commit to this? Why did I say yes? And then you go and you have an okay time and you come home and you're tired and then the next day you're a little hungover because you drank more than you wanted to and you ate those french fries you said you weren't going to eat and then you're feeling guilty and then guilt requires punishment and then you're beating yourself up all the next day. It's like the residual effect of not staying in your power, of not sticking to those non-negotiables, to not having boundaries, you can sometimes eat you alive. And that pain can be far worse than a simple, no, that's not going to work for me this week. I have bigger goals and shit going on. And will that piss some of your circle off? Yeah. Will that make people stop asking you to hang out if you say no enough times? Yeah. When I was competing back in the day, that was one of the biggest challenges I faced. It was I had this massive goal for myself. I wanted to see if I could do it. I wanted to see how far I could push myself. I wanted to see if this was a lifestyle I wanted to pursue. And so I knew in order to do that, I had to commit. And at this point, it was like a 17 or 18 week show that I committed to. And in that time, 17, 18 weeks, that's a long time. It's like three or four months. You know, people stop asking you to hang out. People even start coming at you sideways. Like, oh, you can eat that cookie. It's okay. You know, they don't have the goal and vision that you have for yourself. And while sometimes you can bring people into your vision or goal, often you have to just be rooted in that this is for you and that you're doing this for yourself. And sometimes shit like that can feel selfish. You know, I remember thinking I went to the bar one time, it was one of the girls' birthdays and everybody was drinking. And I think I ordered a Diet Coke or a Red Bull or something, low calorie or no calorie. And I remember thinking, man, I look so good, but I can't even enjoy myself right now man, what am I doing this for? Like, I'm just trying to get up on stage and then I'm just going to put all this weight back on afterwards anyways. What's the point? It was like, I was around people who made me feel like I couldn't have fun if I wasn't drinking. And I was like, really like frustrated and almost blaming them for making me feel that way. And so I realized I had a choice of how I felt. I could go, how many people don't drink? There's plenty of people that go out that don't drink alcohol. And I remember thinking, how wonderful it is that they have a responsible friend that can drive them to and from the bar and I get to look good. And tomorrow I'm going to feel like a million bucks when they're hung over. So when you shift perspective and remember for the greater good, my goal was to do something for the betterment of me. It's okay. If they didn't understand, it's okay. If I made them feel uncomfortable because I wasn't going to drink, it would have been even okay for me not to go. Um, so making decisions based off who you want to be and the highest version of yourself. I know we talk, those are like buzzwords that are out there, the highest version and like, you know, da, 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 da. but it's so true. You can't accomplish anything in life. You can't, you know, 
call in new and more in abundance into your life if you're not rooted in your bigger vision. So if you're having a hard time having conversations with people about your bigger vision, bigger visions, it's really time to grow your network and to scale out and branch out. I have a Facebook group where we support women who are looking to have conversations like this. This is the Beauty Insiders Facebook group. You can find me at Jessica Bergio. Um, and as always, my DMs are open for thoughtful conversation, questions, struggles, whatever you guys are going through, whether it's with your beauty business or marketing, putting yourself out there, showing up as this highest version of yourself. Sometimes, yes, you got to fake it till you make it. But when you're rooted in why you're doing something, trust me, it's so much easier to make decisions. Uh, that's all we have time for today. I look forward to talking to you guys again really soon. Take care.